Hey Steve here and in this video I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process for doing this sky replacement in Photoshop. So there's going to be quite a few different techniques uh, that I'll be using here, some luminosity masking and some general layer masking. Uh, so if you need to get up to speed with any of those techniques uh, then I'll put some links to some other relevant videos in the description of this video so that you can catch up. Uh, so if any of this goes uh, a little bit too fast, then you can go and get the, the basics of these techniques and the fundamentals of luminosity masking in those other videos. And if you like this video, I'd really love it if you could just hit that thumbs up button to let me know so that I can uh, keep on track and keep making more videos like the ones that you like to see. So with that said, let's begin. Now, we've got this image that we're starting off with. Uh, it was taken on a particular sunset where... There wasn't really much color in the sky so it's a pretty gray stormy um, not yeah not really much life in the sky uh, so i'm going to replace the sky with one from this image which is one i took years and years ago um, but i picked this one because it was such a drastically different sky and also because i'm able to cut the sky out without uh you know there's there's not anything really breaking the horizon, so I can just take a big chunk of the sky with the rectangular marquee tool and basically just copy, so Command or Control C, uh, come over into my other image and then just paste it, Command or Control V. And uh, yeah, we haven't got to worry about any mountains or anything sticking up into the sky that we're using. So yeah, that's the first real tip is to use a sky where you don't have to do so much work to begin with. Uh, in, in making it something that you can copy and paste. Uh, so from here we can see obviously the sky doesn't cover the entire area of the sky that we're pasting into. So what I'm going to do is just do a real basic uh, transformation. So Command or Control T to transform the, uh, the new sky. And I'm just going to place the corner up here in the top right. Now as I scale this, hopefully well, no, <laughs> that was a bit of an unfounded uh, or an unlucky hope. I was going to say, hopefully the uh, the sun here can line up exactly in this gap. So that would be really cool if that could happen. Um, however, it's not going to do it if I just keep scrolling that way. So I'm going to come this way as well and just extend it out. So that the sky is pretty much just covering the whole horizon. Um, so that when we come to mask it out, you know, obviously it's going to cover everything that it needs to. So with that done, I'm going to hit return to apply that transformation. And let's just see how that lines up. So I'll just reduce the opacity to see how it's lining up. And yeah, it's not completely central, but that's close enough. Um, okay. Next, the fun part, creating a uh, luminosity mask so that we can effectively mask the sky into this shot. So first let's add a black layer mask to the sky layer. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click the Add Layer Mask button. And that's going to add a black layer mask to conceal the layer. And now all the next, uh, the next part is all going to be done in the Channels panel. So I'm going to click to come into the Channels panel. And I'm going to just have a look through, starting with RGB, I'm just going to have a look through the red green and blue channels to see if there's a particular color channel that gives me a higher level of contrast between the sky and the trees because that's what we're looking for when we're going to create our mask is a high level of contrast between those two elements and as we can see here red we can still see some definition in the trees still the same with the green but blue is giving me a lot darker um, area yeah the, the trees are a lot darker there so that's a higher contrast um, yeah higher level of contrast so we can uh, use this as our starting point um, now I can just duplicate the blue channel now by dragging it down onto the new layer or new channel icon um, just change this uh, to just name it whatever you want I'll just change it to mask one there and so what I'm going to do next is modify this channel directly in the channels panel to further increase the contrast so that the sky becomes as white as possible, hopefully pure white, while the trees and 
the headland over here go as dark or black as possible. So to do this, the dodge and burn tools are actually going to be uh, really handy. So I'm just zooming in and I'm going to concentrate over here first because this little bit of the horizon where the sea just touches the sky, that's going to be the trickiest part. Uh, so let's grab the burn tool. Let's, let's start off with the burn tool. And we're going to burn the shadows. Let's just see how close I can get if I just roughly brush through the water here. Now I want to get as close to the horizon as I can without going over. And yeah, it doesn't matter if the water here goes completely black because we're not going to be masking into the water here. So, you know, if, if this isn't completely perfect, then we'll just be able to tidy up the layer mask for the sky once we've used this as our guide to create the mask. So it doesn't have to be a million percent accurate at the moment, but it will help if it was. Uh, so we've made the water there black as possible. Now I'm just going to do the same over the uh, headland. And then there's just a slight hint of detail in the shadows of the trees here, but I might leave that. Uh, so next we're going to do the opposite and lighten the sky. So choosing the dodge tool, I've got highlights selected. I'm just going to dodge the sky to make that as white as possible. And I'm going to get right up to the edges of the trees here because because we're only dodging the highlights and because the trees are so dark, hopefully this won't dodge any of the detail from the trees. So I can just zip around along the edge here and be pretty confident that we're not going to dodge the trees. Same over here. Now let's just get in this gap. Okay. Now what I might do as well is just actually get rid of the uh, <laughs> get rid of these branches up in the top corner because I think they're going to cause a bit of a problem. The fact that they are um, they're grey rather than black. So let me just see if I can get rid of this. Actually, I'll just use a white brush for this. Um, white brush, hundred percent. So just brushing directly into the channel. And I'll try and cut it off at a point that makes sense. And again, we can tidy this up in the actual layer mask if we need to, if it doesn't create the perfect, um, yeah, you know, the perfect mask. So, okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's use this to brush the new sky into the foreground of our main image. So to do that, we will, okay, we've still got the brush selected. We've got a white foreground color and I'll stick on a 100% opacity for the brush. Now we need to load mask one as a selection. So command or control click on mask one. So that's now loaded as a selection. I'm gonna come back via the RGB channel. So click that first, back over into layers into the layer one layer mask. I'm going to hide the marching ants with command or control H. So that's uh, the selection is still active at this point. And now as I brush with the brush into the sky, we're going to reveal the sky. But as I brush over the edges of the trees, we can see we're not actually revealing the sky in those, you know, in the trees themselves. So I'll just go over this bit a couple of times just to get those uh, slight greys up here in the in the top where the trees are. And that's a pretty good first go. Now I will zoom in over here because I noticed we've brushed through some of the sky into the water here. So I'm just going to click X on the keyboard to set the foreground color to black and I'll just clean that up there. And also a little bit along the along the bottom here, there's a bit of sky that came into the sea. And okay, so up here we've got some, a little bit of dodginess going on with the blend, and that's just because of 
the intricate details of the trees against the background. Now we could spend a lot of time trying to fix up the mask to mask those in perfectly, or we could mask them out if they're just looking weird, or what you'll actually find is a lot more of a time-saving way to go about this um, is actually just just tweak the balance of brightness between the sky and the foreground. Uh, so part of the reason why it looks a bit dodgy and weird up here is the fact that the sky is actually darker than it should be in relation to the shadows that we're looking at here. You know, the trees are, uh, should be darker than the sky or the sky should be as light or lighter uh, than the trees. So um, yeah, what we can do, we can either lighten the sky or darken the foreground. Let's start with, uh, well, let's try darkening the foreground. So I'm going to click on the background layer so that when I now add a curves adjustment, actually, first I'll remember to deselect my active selection. So Command or Control D. Now I'll hit the curves adjustment layer and I'll just darken the foreground a bit to, uh, to darken the trees as well. And we can see here that that kind of dodgy fringing has all but disappeared because now this layer is as dark as it should be, so it's not got those patches of lightness that are standing out against that darker sky. Uh, so that was a pretty simple fix. Now, the next thing that I want to do is, well, actually, let's just doubly confirm that the sky and the foreground are sort of well balanced in terms of brightness. I think they are. Maybe the sky could be a little bit lighter still, so I'm just going to add a curves adjustment to the sky. And I'm going to clip the curves adjustment layer to the sky layer by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard and then clicking on the line in between the two layers in the Layers panel. That clips it to the sky only so that I can now brighten the sky a bit without brightening everything that's underneath it in the Layers panel. Um, so. Being able to brighten the two elements separately is actually really helpful. Uh, so I think I would like to have the image a bit brighter just generally. So I'm going to return a bit of brightness to the foreground. Brighten the sky as we go. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's where we'll leave it anyway. That's looking pretty good. So next we need to get the color balance between the sky and the foreground. Uh, we need to have that making a bit more sense. So obviously the sky was a lot warmer than the original foreground. So how we're going to do this, I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool again, and I'm just going to select like a part of the sky here. that's got some of those nice warm colors and I'm going to copy merged. I'm going to paste to create a new layer with that little section on it. And I'm going to transform this little section and stretch it out to cover the entire image. And now I'm going to go to the uh, filter, blur, and then average. So that's just picking the average color from that section and creating a layer just of that solid color. Now from here, we can choose, I mean, when you're doing this yourself, just have a scroll through all the different blend modes, um, but probably soft light or overlay. Well, it's a bit too contrasty for, for overlay, but soft light is a good place to start. And then just reduce the opacity. Uh, and thank you, just until it sort of makes sense. So we've warmed the foreground up. Now, actually, I wonder if we could actually just do this so that it only applies to the foreground. So I'm just going to drag that colored layer beneath the sky so that we're not affecting the sky with that. And I think that looks pretty good. So maybe we can just warm it up a little bit more. Now that has had the effect of lightening the foreground a bit. So maybe we can darken the foreground again with the curves. So at this point, all we're looking for is getting that right balance between the sky and the foreground of color and light. So I think we're pretty much there. Uh, now at this point, we could then start to tweak 
the uh, the color balance of the image just as a whole rather than separately. Um, and from this point forward, really, it's just a matter of running through the regular workflow to process the image. So the blend is pretty much done. Uh, if we wanted to make some color adjustments, we could do that with a curves adjustment and just sort of tweak the red, green, and blue channels. I think adding a bit of blue into here might, might work. Might look quite nice. Um, let's see if we can remove a bit of green. Maybe not so much. Okay, but that's just a really subtle color adjustment there. Uh, from here, maybe we can start adding some contrast to really bring out the foreground. Um, and then we'd have to mask this out from the sky. Actually, we can... Yeah, because we've got the sky and the foreground separate now, we can still just drag this down beneath the sky so that it only affects the foreground. So that's just a bit of a contrast boost there. And then, yeah, as I said, from here, I mean, the blend is pretty much done. So it's just a case of, you know, what you want to do to, to tweak the colors and the contrast throughout the whole image to really, um, you know, to just complete your, your workflow and complete the whole process. Uh, to, to finish this image off. Um, let's just run through a couple of steps. So I think what I would do next is just try to unflatten the light in the image so that the light in the original foreground was pretty flat, uh, but the sun in the sky is obviously quite dominant. So I think we need to make more of a big deal of where the light is coming from. So let's add a curves adjustment. Darken the image with that curve. Now let's invert the mask to hide the to hide the adjustment. Now with a white brush, we can just bring that. Um, oh no, I've gone the other way around. Let's let's invert that uh, to make it reappear. And now let's just sort of lighten the center of the image and sort of where the light is coming from there. Um, just to really focus on where that light is coming from. Um, maybe this is a, this curve is a, still a bit too dark. Uh, and then we can go the other way around by brightening the image and then inverting and then adding some light coming from over here. But there we go. That pretty much is the uh, the process for blending a sky into a, into a different foreground. So if you like this video and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then you can just hit that icon that's on the screen right now. Uh, subscribe to my channel and you'll be updated every time I publish a new video like this one. And remember to just hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw in this video. So thanks for watching. See you next time.